Hello and welcome to our online worship this week. And this week we celebrate harvest. Um, it's very strange, isn't it, not to be in church uh, surrounded by flowers and fruit and vegetables, tins of things which people have brought that we can distribute. But we still need to celebrate and we still need to offer God our thanksgiving. We don't do that um, because we have to. I hope that we do it because we want to. We want to praise God and give him his worth. And that's what we'll be doing this morning. And maybe to this de- this time, um, you can look around your house and think about the things that uh, you are surrounded by for which you can be thankful. We have a lot of things for which we can uh, feel very hard done by at the moment but let's try to turn that state of mind around today and uh, raise our hearts and minds as we praise and thank God for what he gives to us. If you would like to make a harvest donation um, you can still do that. Um, We would prefer it if you would put um, some money either cash or a cheque made to Bromborough PCC into an envelope and then you can either um, post it to the parish centre, you can bring it to church or you can drop it through the rectory letterbox and we will make sure that that collection is used for our local food bank and for the Charles Thompson mission, uh, both of which um, in different ways are helping local people, uh, people in the area of Wirral. So let's begin our worship together. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you and also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters from above the heavens. Let them praise the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them for ever and ever. And we continue that theme of praise as we sing uh, perhaps one of the most well-known harvest hymns. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. fields and scatter the good seed on the land but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand he sends the snow in winter the warmth to swell the grain the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love He only is the maker of all things near and far He paints the wayside flag lights the evening star the winds and waves obey him by him the birds are fed much more to us his children he gives our daily bread all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above then thank the lord oh thank the lord for all Father, for all things bright and good, the seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer, for all I love imparts, and what thou most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above 
then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all His love. come to our confession that time in our service where we say sorry to God that we confess the things that we have done and the things that our society has done that it should not have done and we ask God's forgiveness for our behavior this morning um, or today this uh, confession will um, take the form of a responsive confession. So when I say, hear our prayer and in your mercy, please reply, forgive us and help us. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer, and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes we forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but we often ignore the cry of the hungry and the poor. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless. We do not care for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. And now we receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, Forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will and give us the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Rachel is going to read for us today. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Ten healed of leprosy. Now on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you walk out of the supermarket or when the supermarket delivery has come, whether that's uh, via one of the supermarket vans or a friend or a neighbour, do you look at the food and say, thank you, God? Do you look at the food and say thank you to the fisherman who caught the tuna that's in the tin? Thank you to the farmer who reared uh, the cattle so that you have minced beef. Thank you to the bakers, even if they're in a factory, it doesn't matter, who have made the cakes, the biscuits. 
thank you to those who have made sure that the crops grew and that the harvest was picked so that we have fruit and vegetables. I bet you don't. I don't. Well, not in that moment anyway. I'm too busy unpacking the shopping and putting it away and then thinking about what is it we're going to have for tea or what is it needs to go in the freezer and so on and so on. I don't even say thank you, God, for the fact that I've got a freezer. Though I have to say, I very often say thank you, God, as I sit in my lounge and feel the sun coming through the windows, as it often does these last few days. Uh, that feels like a real gift. But you see, the thing is, the further away we get from something, the less likely we are to be thankful. And that is, again, our human nature. Uh, when I was little, most of my immediate relatives were often in the lounge at Christmas to be thanked for gifts. Birthdays were a little bit different. So at Christmas, everybody got an enormous hug and a big thank you. I was often requested to kiss the elderly relatives and that could feel a bit strange when you're little, can't it? Uh, I was uh, very grateful and they saw how excited I was about the object and everybody was involved. I remember Anna, when she was little, um, she would open a parcel and it's gone down in family history as she would look and she'd say, thank you. It's what I always wanted. Doesn't matter what it was. What a wonderful, well-spoken piece of childlike delight that we could all do to remember. My birthday, as I mentioned, was different. People weren't there. And so um, I was always asked by my parents to write letters to the relatives far away who had given me gifts. And I have to say, I wasn't very good at it. And so sometimes I would forget to say that thank you. And I realise now as an adult how important it is when my niece writes to me, thank you, Auntie Jen, for something that I have sent to her. She's very good at it. I'm always deeply appreciative when people whose funerals I've done write to me and say, thank you. I'm always deeply appreciative. And in those moments, recognise that I am not always very good at saying thank you. I tend to have moved on to the next thing without using those words. And it doesn't mean that I'm not appreciative, but what it means is that the other person is not blessed with my words of thankfulness. So if you've ever been one of those, I say to you now, please forgive me. And I am thankful for whatever you have given, whatever you have done. And that brings me to our Bible story today, the story of the 10 lepers who come to Jesus and who long for healing. And he heals them. He makes them well from a disease that kept them cast out of their local society, uh, meant that they could not work for their families, um, made them isolated and lonely. We know a little glimpse of what that might be at the moment. If you've got a fever and they think you, you think you've got COVID-19, you are required to be isolated. But thankfully, within your home, uh, for these people, the lepers, they would have been sent outside of the village and many of them would have had to live roughly uh, without a roof over their head. There was no cure at that time for leprosy. There is now, thankfully, although in some parts of the world, the same scenario as existed in Jesus' time still goes on. So not only is Jesus performing a miraculous healing of their bodies, he's also bringing about a change in the way that their lives can be led. They're no longer required to go outside of the community they can be welcomed back into it. And they run off to the temple and they run off with enthusiasm. Wouldn't you or I, if you had just been made well from a disease that had kept you removed from everybody, I guess you'd long to go back and see them all. And it doesn't mean that they weren't grateful to Jesus. They were just pulled in that direction and did not stop to say thank you. But for one, one who was a Samaritan, not a Jew. And that's quite important. He didn't have the Jewish teaching, the background of the idea that all things come from God. 
he was already somebody who would be considered something of an outsider to the Jewish people, but probably collected together with the other men because he was a leper. And he comes back to Jesus, he walks away first, but he comes back. And he kneels before him and recognises him as Lord and Master and says, thank you. Thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you. And Jesus says, where are the others? Where are the others? They've already gone. They don't recognise that it is through Jesus that they have been healed. They don't recognise that it's from him the gift is given. They don't recognise what is before them, that faith in God brings a greater healing than just bodily and social healing, but also the gift of salvation, of eternal life. We aren't thankful for that particularly, are we? Because eternal life is associated with death and we don't want to die. We want to live here and now in what we know that we want that gift that has been given to us to continue. The Human Rights Act was a really important point in history. It was a point in which society recognised that there were basic needs that people should have. They should have shelter and be able to live in safety. They should have access to water and to food. They should have access to a fair legal system and so on and so on. It's a really, really important point in our society, that, that development of that act. But unfortunately, what it's done is in part as a byproduct of that right piece of legislation, that right act. What it's done is to create a society who believes many things are their right and they forget that they are blessed with those things. Uh, some years ago, I came across a young woman who had not been paying her house bills, her, her rent or her water bill. And when asked about that water bill, her words were, well, it's my right to have water. Why should I pay for it? In a sense, being having a right to something is not in contradiction to being thankful for it. I have never seen people as thankful as they were when we delivered very small amounts of groceries to different households. Not people that necessarily came into church, but people who were in great need and recognised that what we had given was a blessing to them. And when we asked about it, I always said the same thing. Don't thank me, thank God. It comes from him. Uh, that move for me to do something about feeding people was not something I wanted to do. Lifting heavy bags and having to climb over the food on the doorstep, much as it gave me great joy. But it was something I felt completely and utterly compelled to do uh, because of my faith, because I believe God was telling me that we needed to do that. And others joined in and came on board. In that moment of desperate need, those people who we helped uh, were able to see that God was blessing them. And many of them promised to come and be part of the church. And I hope that when we are able to function a bit more normally, they will do that. And yet we as dedicated and committed Christians, many of us, many of you listening and, and watching this, we often forget to say thank you. We forget uh, the gratitude that we have to those who harvest and the fact that all things come from God. It should, as a human, uh, where things are shared out, be our right to have an equal share. But the fact that we have water at all to nourish us and refresh us is a gift from God. The fact that we have food in any form is a blessing from God. You know what? The next time I get my shopping delivered, because at the moment I don't really want to go into supermarkets, although I'm out and about in other ways. The next time I am going to do my very best as, as those things are placed on the table in my kitchen before I put them away. 
that just as a, a deliberate act, I'm going to thank God for the blessing of them. Oh, I, I earned the money. Yes. I, I ordered the food. Yes. But, you know, the fact that I have that money, the fact that I live in an area where I am blessed with supermarkets who can deliver, the fact that I am warm and dry, it has a root that involves me, but ultimately is something that's given to me by God. So as we come to the harvest season, we thank God for all that we have, the people, the things, and especially the blessing of food and provision. And I ask you this week to look around you and to think about those things for which you can be thankful. It is a hard season of our lives, this pandemic. It is difficult because there are lots of things that we're struggling with. But if we begin to go through the act of being thankful, the saying of the words and the reviewing of what we have, it will change our state of mind. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to live thankfully and to live well. So let's see what we can do in the week ahead. Thanks be to God. Amen. We join together as we say what we believe. Once again, this is a question and answer. I'll ask you the question and I hope that you can feel able to reply, we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of our church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Roz is going to lead us in our intercessions. We gather together, remotely but strong in faith, to celebrate and thank you for our harvests gathered in by those who work the land, giving us plenty of food and choice. You have made us stewards of this earth. Teach us to treasure the environment, stopping our casual waste of precious resources, sharing what we have with those who have less. We thank you for the gift of water in abundance, the trickling streams, mighty rivers and lakes, vast oceans, we think of and pray for those who do not have enough water. We thank you for the sun that brightens our days and ripens our crops, for the warmth on our backs and the blue of the summer skies. We think of and pray for those for whom the sun beats down without mercy. We thank you for the winds that blow and help pollinate our crops, for the grains that grow tall and strong, for the trees that blossom and flourish. Think of and pray for those who have bare landscapes and sparse crop fields. We thank you for your generosity of our harvests, feeding us and allowing us freedom to choose our food. As we return to our warm and comfortable homes, let us remember those without a roof tonight. All these gifts we accept from you with thanks and praise. Help us to share them amongst those who do not have enough. We think of those who worry about money or domestic strife. We pray that they may know peace and your surrounding love, remembering the wounded, the damaged, the weak, the ill, those without friends, relatives or neighbours to listen. May we be a seed sown by you, 
growing and flourishing in our faith until finally we are harvested and join you in heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer in the traditional format. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the collect for harvest time. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing our second hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, with hearts and hands and voices. And I hope that wherever you are, you can lift your voice in thanks and praise to God. Certainly if you're at home, you'll be able to do it far more loudly than you can do if you're in church at the moment. Now thank we all our God, with hearts and hands and voices, such wonders he has done, in him the world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way, with countless gifts of love. God's blessing. Tend the earth, care for God's creation, and bring forth fruits of righteousness and blessing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.